Hello everyone, welcome back. If you're a graduate of Life Sciences, then this video is specifically for you. I'm Pavan Shriram, former Erasmus Mundus Scholar and former Erasmus Mundus Association President. In this video, I'll be discussing with Avon Agustin about his journey of successfully winning an Erasmus Mundus Scholarship to pursue Masters in Life Sciences in Europe. So you are an Erasmus Mundus recipient. How many Erasmus Mundus programs did you apply for and how many did you get shortlisted and get the scholarship for? Um, this is my first Erasmus application. So I have really applied for a single program. Uh, it's called like EMJMD, uh, EMABG, a European Masters in Animal Breeding and Genetics. And this is my first program. And uh, yeah, I was fortunate to get to the first application. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, how was your experience like? Uh, was a grade a very important uh, component? The CGP a very important component for you to get this scholarship, or what were the things which led you to get this scholarship? Okay, uh, so the first thing is like uh, CGPA matters, but not a lot. So it's like you must want uh, what our program requires, just maybe around fifty-five or sixty-five percent. But uh, in my view, it's it's not like the marks, you know. Uh, the marks which matters the most it's like your kind of interest to the field so mark is just a criteria among other criteria uh, so it's better to stress on the other parts like your motivation letter your recommendation letter so and uh, maybe your language requirements so i think the 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 main key lies there than your cgpa uh, what were the tips you would like to suggest to the prospective students and how should they go about making their CV, motivation and the letter of recommendation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are the uh, basic three things which needed. So CV, uh, LOR and, uh, and uh, SOP. So CV, uh, most of the Erasmus uh, things are in Europass format. So, so, so just try to be it in the Europass format. And uh, CV is pretty basic. Uh, just order your things, uh, you know, most like in the basic way. Mm. Uh, so I think the more weightage goes to the SOP part. SOP is the most, you know, uh, the needed thing for uh, your application. So spend more time in that. In my case, I spend around three months for just drafting an SOP of uh, like one and a half pages. So it was long, but but I think you guys must invest more uh, in drafting a good SOP. So the idea which I uh, used is like a lock and key method. Uh, it was like, I just, you know, you know, I just tried to found out what are the needs for my program. And I drafted the SOP based on that. So I just had a, a similar profile, which is my key and uh, the the lock was the requirements for uh, my program so i just you know i just adjusted i just drafted my key that my profile with the lock so uh, so the first thing uh, in my view uh, as a tip is to just research whole about the program like maybe it is like a, a program for engineering or uh, maybe in the technical field biological field whatever it is try to research more what the program wants so what is the main aim of the program? What is the motto of the program? Then try to use like your CV, like your SOP must be the answer for the questions or the requirements in that program. So draft your SOP in a way that it fulfills the needs of the program. So, so, so that was the my you know uh, kind of tip I used uh, in drafting my uh, like the SOP, and also I also um, uh, did something like. Uh, uh, most of the uh, like Erasmus programs uh, does not only focus on the study part. Uh, they need this this mobility thing and the intercultural competence and and like uh, uh, and they do have something like the uh, European values. So just try to stress more on that part too. So just don't limit yourself uh, on the study part. Just try to add something which you which you know which which somehow you know. Uh, enhances this intercultural competence or all those things so i think your cv must be a complete package uh, and your cv and your sop both must be a complete package uh, to you know fulfill the needs of the program and the last thing uh, your recommendation letters uh, try to meet your professors or your employers personally and ask them uh, about these things 
and uh, it's better you know uh, your your professor or the em- like like employer from whom you are trying to get the recommendation letter yes their profile must be good but more than that uh, you know uh, you must have a good relation with that person so it's better uh, to ask from a person who is much more related to you and who who knows you well so that uh, he or she could draft a good recommendation uh, you know as, um, maybe a sounding one for you so that's the basic three things uh, you know in in my view you know that is needed excellent uh, tips but uh, in your case did you have work experience also along with your uh, studies in uh... no 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 i didn't had i just want to give like uh, uh, the other recommendation letters of two professors so i just you know i got uh, like they got it from my academic teacher okay. than my work space and uh, coming to uh, the next question is uh, mm-hmm. your erasmus mundus uh, uh, course for the scholarship did you also have to mm-hmm. go through an interview process or no uh no in in my program i didn't have this interview thing uh, the whole selection was based on application so mm-hmm. we had weightage for each document so the document collection and the document completion was the major you know the hurdle for, uh, for us so we had like around 25% weightage for uh, sop uh 20% weightage for a uh, cv 15% for our language requirements 15 for you know uh, mm-hmm. you know the recommendation letters and the uh, uh, applicants were ranked based on that so in 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 my case i, I didn't have interview uh, the only hurdle was to you know draft a perfect document like, you know it's it's not like perfect uh, a nearly perfect document so that was our kind of selection criteria and in your case uh, how did you even hear about erasmus mundus in first place <laughs> um that was uh, an expected thing actually it was an accident i heard about this erasmus mundus thing uh, because when i was in my university i just you know have a good uh, you know maybe a networking so i just talk with a lot of phd guys uh, master students so then one fine day one phd guy Uh, someone told me like there is something called erasmus mundus so it's like erasmus mundus it's 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 different the 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 name feels so alien it's like erasmus mundus okay but that thing you know somehow you know it was in my head for a long time so i just you know searched about it then came to know you know the the good things that are offered by this scholarship and then one fine day i thought like i would start to apply but the thing is that i just pre-planned so my my uh, like like what it is that like i just had my profile and i just try to find uh, the program which suits more to my profile so i just searched it so it was around uh, 16 courses so, so i filtered for life science i'm i'm basically from life sciences so i like filtered for the life sciences so it was around 16 programs like precision medicine um, the ear maybe you was there, like the animal breeding and genetics was evolutionary biology so it was like long so i just you know i just uh, filtered and filtered and selected the major program and then i took uh, around 8 uh, to 10 months to uh, to collect the documents and uh, you know uh, draft the documents and then apply it so uh, i also say for the students who try to apply that you know it's better to uh, pre plan maybe a year like a pre plan well and then start to collect the documents and the best thing is to complete your your application process if it is wrong or right just try to complete it fully so most people you, uh, they just you know go away before if they found like something is wrong so they just you know pre plan and then complete the things and yeah so you will have a fair chance to you know is there any specific application process you followed or you had to follow was there any challenge or was it quite straightforward the application process for your course um um uh no they uh, like what i have mentioned before is like i i did the lock and key method so that was something i found which is more more kind of effective so what i did is like i first researched about the needs of this application so i just researched well and what this program really wants so i just tried to draft my whole profile the the uh, the documents in my profile in which you know it, it it fills the need so you know it's just it's just making our profile complementary to 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 the requirements so i think that's the key key application process which i tried and fortunately it got to work 
<laughs> Absolutely. But uh, in your case, um, it's a quite a generous scholarship which is given to a student. So, are you happy with the scholarship? Mm-hmm. And what did mm-hmm. what does the scholarship entail? What does it consist of? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's one of the prestigious thing and it's a lot of money <laughs> to be frank um, um in my case i get around uh, 1000 euros per month as a subsistence course which will be around for like 24 months uh then i will get around uh, 3000 per annum for my travel expenses then around like 1000 per annum for kind of installation courses like uh, like the course and then I'll get around 9,000 euros per year for like uh, the participation course, which include the, the tuition fee, all those things. So pretty much everything is covered. Everything, and anything and everything is covered. Everything yeah. is covered, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the kind of insurance falls under this uh, participation course. So it's, it's okay. all covered. So then that is automatically deducted from your scholarship and goes to the university directly, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a very very uh, good uh, scholarship in many ways to study in prestigious universities in Europe mm-hmm. and also get a scholarship. Mm-hmm. It's a dream for many people. <laughs> yeah, and coming to the next one is, uh, of course, you got the scholarship. And how was the process with the visa? And what were the steps you had to undergo? Were there any hurdles, or was it a very smooth process for you? Um, actually. Uh, it's actually easy to get a visa, but in my case, it was a bit difficult due to the COVID thing. So the visa offices were closed for a long time. So it was totally opened after maybe six months. And as a recent, there was so pending application. So it was hard to get uh, an appointment. Uh, so 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 that was the first hurdle which I want to face. And the next hurdle uh, was to, you know, uh, they get the right documents so i wanted uh, my uh, the admission a letter from my university and the other thing especially during the covid times what the visa offices demand is like you need a physical presence letter so it must be a, a letter from your university stating that like this guy must be there physically present so that you know so 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 uh, we need to get that letter mm. so i think only you know uh, these two things were uh, uh, a bit hard but somehow you know it so got, you applied through it got, you know, was, did you apply directly to the german embassy and was there any application fee for the visa um no uh, actually the german em- embassy uh, is currently closed now the only functional thing is vfs so the german embassy only does the processing right now so so Right now, they are not accepting direct applications. So we must apply through VFS right now. Maybe right now, maybe after this COVID situation ends, I think it would be, you know, resume back to the embassy things. And 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 like like added to that, if we are apl- uh, like, like applying through a German em- uh, um, like embassy, uh, if we are a scholarship holders, uh, there is a chance that we may get our, uh, you know, visa fee back. But do you find big difference between your education back in India and here and do you have to adapt a little bit differently for this or how, how is it going so far? Maybe it's a bit early for me to ask this question, but how is it going? So um, far? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's different from India. So you know that the European culture is it's different in case of education and like everything so the the teaching method is pretty different so the uh, one thing i found interesting uh, comparing indian educational system and the european system is this loss of this hierarchical thing so there is no you know like the professor like the, the, the next part then the students so it's like completely open so we can just you know uh, let them know what we want and we can just uh, you know directly ask them you know our concerns and it would be solved so it's like more open up, opened up, and yes, uh, they are uh, like more, uh, you know, what to say, uh, practical oriented. So, uh, in like back in India, I think we know all the theory, you know, it, you know how things work, but we sometimes, you know, not exposed to uh, most of the practical things. But here, in case uh, there is a perfect balance between the theoretical knowledge and the practical knowledge, so I found it more interesting. And also the, the the means of 
uh the communication is through english and uh, you know and like we can meet a lot of international students and you know and like you know it's like more of this cultural uh, competence happening with education so i think that's great and uh, my final question to you is uh do you feel homesick and was there any specific preparations you did before coming to germany in your case do you have any <laughs> specific tips for uh, students who are watching this video and listening to you <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah yeah i would say that uh, just you know uh, you may feel homesick for maybe a couple of months but uh, it's completely natural and then just try to uh, you know search about you know you know what are the things which are unavailable in the city or the place which you are coming and try to you know uh, you know you know uh, like take it yourself just the with the basic things and you know uh, and then after some time you can just adapt you know with the system here uh, it it takes a time but yes at last you will get adapted so the process of acclimatization you know it it takes some time but yes at last it gets and then try to uh, be more open you know uh, don't be much more you know narrow and like you know closed uh, try to be as much open as possible try to talk and interact with uh, most of your international friends like you will meet a lot of international friends you know it would be like a whole globe together there will be like people from india from africa from everywhere like from everywhere in the whole globe then you must you know you must be open to them and this and there is this intercultural competence you know you like you you come to know about how other things in countries like other than india works and then your kind of knowledge would be widened and then yeah it's like you know and also like we try to maintain a perfect balance between your uh, this uh, work culture and your other entertainment so you know yeah just you know, like like try to maintain a balance and be in the system so i think that works so it is very clear in avon's case that he was not necessarily from the so called prestigious institution so what it says it's very important that you need to believe in your abilities you need to believe in your profile and most important you need to believe in yourself moving forward with the application irrespective of the outcome this is going to be a great learning experience so give it a try and go for it yeah don't forget to like subscribe and share you never know whose life you might be changing